Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to this inaugural edition of Tropics Talk here in 2021. I'm meteorologist Jim Dickey uh, here in Southwest Florida in Fort Myers. Uh, Tropics Talk, what we're going to be doing as we head through hurricane season uh, near daily to start just about every other day. And then once we get to the heart of the season every day, Tropics Talk will be a place where I can take a more in-depth look at what's going on across the tropics, uh, any storms out there, from the coast of Africa all the way to close to here in Florida. Uh, we'll be talking about all of it in just about each and every day. So I figured to sort of kick us off here with the season uh, just about 25 days away as I record this, let's take a look at uh, some of the early indications of what this 2021 hurricane season may hold in store uh, for the Atlantic Basin. And you know, anytime you're talking a hurricane season outlook, you're usually going to begin with looking at what's going on with the ENSO cycle, the stage of the ENSO, El Nino, La Nina. Uh, because when you have an El Nino in place for uh, the hurricane season, it tends to mean a less active season in the Atlantic. Remember, El Nino means warmer than normal waters in the tropical Pacific. When you have that, it tends to mean a stronger southern portion of the jet stream. It tends to mean more wind shear across the Atlantic Basin. Developing tropical systems, they want conditions basically to be calm. They want to be able to stack themselves vertically to grow without being disturbed by any outside influences like wind shear, which when you put that into place, winds changing with speed and direction as you go up in the atmosphere, it tends to tear those developing storms apart. So with more wind shear, it tends to mean less storms and less intense storms when they do form. Well, of course, last year, the most active season on record for the Atlantic Basin, a big part of the reason why we settled into a La Nina. So we didn't have that inhibiting force from El Nino. And as we look at the sea surface temperature anomaly right now, as we're in May and headed towards hurricane season, all those blues, those greens in the tropical equatorial Pacific, that means La Nina is still in place. Yeah, it held on through the fall, through the winter, still going now as we head into spring. But indications are we're starting to warm things up, at least a little bit. When you look at the various models, this is a product put out uh, by the CPC, each individual line different model forecast showing you how that temperature anomaly is expected to trend. The zero line would mean near average temperatures, where I've highlighted in blue would be a La Nina, highlighted in red would be an El Nino, and just about everyone shows a general warming trend. A few do dip back down to La Nina. As you look at the bottom of that graph, these are three month sort of groups. So AMJ would be the average of April, May, and June. MJJ, May, June, July, and so on and so forth. We're looking in particular from uh, June, July, August, all the way through September, October, November. Again, that's hurricane season. You see most of those lines, including the averages, show ENSO neutral. So what does that mean? Still doesn't mean you have that uh, inhibiting factor from El Nino, but generally speaking, when you look over the years, it, it tends to be a, a better setup or a uh, lesser hurricane season when you're warming the waters as opposed to cooling them down like we had last season. But still, no signs at this point, save for a few of those models going towards a weak El Nino, of El Nino setting up, of us really having that inhibiting factor. So with Enso Neutral, that would sort of put us in the column of a more active hurricane season ahead of us. And then, it's a good thing to look at what's going on in the Atlantic. It's where the storm is going to form, of course. So clearly, this thing is sort of jumping off the page to you right now. All the oranges showing up across the central and western Atlantic and even parts of the Gulf of Mexico. Temperatures already above average here. The one spot where temperature is a little bit below average or close to it, well, that's some good news. That's what we consider the Atlantic's main development region. Near the coast of Africa, from there all the way to the Lesser Antilles, the waters are a little bit cooler, which perhaps a bit of an inhibiting factor. But all that warmth in the Atlantic especially, again, uh, near the coast, right along the Gulf Stream in the Gulf of Mexico, that would sort of put things, again, back in the column of a more active season. So something else we can do as we make a hurricane season forecast is take what we're seeing here in the waters, in the sea surface temperature anomalies, in the Atlantic and what's going on in the end cell, and compare that to years past. Look at years where we had similar temperature anomalies, and uh, we see what those numbers played out. We can get an idea of what we're looking at. So 
I went back through and a couple of the years that line up closely with this in recent times, one, 1999. That featured a near average hurricane season. 12 storms, eight hurricanes, five major hurricanes. I do want you to note sort of where the clusters of the tracks were, the Western Atlantic along the Gulf Stream, and then a cluster of storms there in the Western Gulf of Mexico. One storm in particular, uh, close to my heart that I remember fondly, or at least I remember in general, is Floyd, Hurricane Floyd. Growing up in Pennsylvania, that storm came in, brought some big flooding all the way up into the Northeast after moving on shore in the Carolinas, an absolute monster in the Atlantic. Now, the next year also looks pretty similar to what we're seeing now, the year 2000. That was a more active year. 15 hurricanes, or 15 named storms rather, eight hurricanes and three major hurricanes. And note sort of the clusters too, Western Atlantic, Western Gulf of Mexico. And there's another year, 2008. This one is more scattershot with the various tracks, but again, trends pretty closely with the water temperature seen out there right now. This was an above active year. So that's three seasons, three analogs that showed near or above average activity. And then I do want to show you something that I guess we could consider the best case scenario, and that was 2013. Now, what was interesting about that year is going into the season, because, you know, more or less the same conditions were in place. It was a weak La Nina or Enso neutral, and that's how things stayed through the entirety of the season. So all the preseason outlooks called for a very active year, and yet, while we had 14 named storms, only two of them became hurricanes. We had to wait all the way until peak season for the first hurricane to even form zero major hurricanes, only one system impacting land, and that was a weak tropical storm that moved into Florida's Big Bend. Now, what happened here, Enso wasn't much of a player. Rather, uh, we never really established that Atlantic Ridge, those calm conditions in the Atlantic. It was sort of a spring-like pattern that stayed in place all through the summer months. There was a lot of wind shear out there across the Atlantic Basin, and that kept things quiet. So certainly we hope for something like this to play out this year. Uh, but in general, again, when you look at the analog years, they tend to suggest more active seasons. And especially when we looked at 99 and 2000, and uh, 1999 and 2000, and a few others. This is from the website Tropical Tidbits, great resource to use during hurricane season. It sort of points out two areas where, when you look at various analogs to the temperature anomalies, where tracks sort of tend to bundle up, where uh, there's a little more activity than normal in those given seasons. Western Atlantic, Central and Western Gulf of Mexico. If I were to pinpoint two areas to watch closely this season, it would be those two, which I mean every season. You look for uh, the Gulf Coast and the East Coast. But again, uh, suggestions are perhaps a little more active in those spots than normal. But some good news here, look at the Caribbean tends to be less active years uh, with these analogs. And even Florida and the eastern Gulf of Mexico, a little pocket of below average activity, which would again be great news for our purposes here uh, in Southwest Florida. So all this being said, most signs point to a more active than normal season. This is the first forecast put out by one of the more reliable forecast groups out of Colorado State, calling for 17 named storms, eight hurricanes, and four major hurricanes above average. But I do think it's important to note, even that, even an above average year would feel pretty quiet compared to what we just went through last year with, of course, 30 named storms going all the way into November, the 13 hurricanes and six major hurricanes that we saw and the record number of landfalls in the United States. So when I put this all together, I, I think you can't come away with any other conclusion that uh, the most likely scenario at this point is the season is near or even above average. My call at this point, 14 to 18 named storms. I think four to eight of those become hurricanes with three to five being major hurricanes. So not too far off from the new average, uh, but a little bit above and certainly a, a uh, rather active year. And with all these hurricane forecasts, you know, you can sort of put it aside at the end of the day because even in a below active year, all it takes is one storm to hit where you live to make the season, to make it a bad season for you. I always think back to Hurricane Andrew. That was a very quiet year, one of the least active seasons on record. And yet that monster Category 5 plowed into South Florida and it's a storm nobody there will ever, ever forget. One of the worst hit the United States on record. So again, it only takes one and even if things pan out to be a more quiet season, we'll still be watching things closely 
all season long. We'll leave you with the names list for 2021. And again, a reminder that here on Tropics Talk, we'll be with you all season long. We'll have near daily updates to the early part of the season. We'll have daily updates as you get into the heart of the hurricane season. So you can have more information to help uh, plan your hurricane season. And that's what I want to leave you with too, sort of the thought. Make sure you have a plan in place before we get to the heart of hurricane season. Make sure you know what you're going to do if you have to evacuate. Make sure you're already stocked up on uh, those emergency supplies. And of course, we'll be tracking everything for you every morning and every evening on ABC7 as well. So be sure you're turning it, you're uh, tuning in uh, to us here on ABC7 in Southwest Florida. Until next time, I'm meteorologist Jim Dickey.